Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about the quotient rule for radicals. And the quotient rule for radicals is very similar to the product rule for radicals. So before we read it, let's start out by looking at these conditions here. So we want to say that if A is greater than or equal to 0, and B is greater than or equal to 0, then what we can do using the quotient rule for radicals is if we have something that's the square root of A over B, we can break this up. This is equal to the square root of A over the square root of B. So it's really simple to understand. So basically the square root of a quotient is the quotient of the square roots. Okay, so let's look at some sample problems. Because we already learned how to simplify, this is no different than what we did when we looked at the multiplication application, and we'll just jump right in here. So we want to simplify each, and we have the square root of 15 over 48. So of course I'm going to break this up right away into the square root of 15 over the square root of 48. So what can I do? Well, on the top, I can't really do anything. Because 15, there's no perfect square in there. It's just 5 times 3. So I'm going to leave that alone. Here, I have the square root of 48. And 48 is 16 times 3. 16 is a perfect square. It's 4 times 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as the square root of 15 over the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. So what I can do now is I have the square root of 15 over the square root of 16 is what? Square root of 16 is 4, then times the square root of 3. So now I'm done, right? Wrong. There's something else you can do here. And this is always something that's kind of tricky. You've got to train your brain to kind of like look for these things. If I was to break this square root of 15 down, I can actually write it as what? Square root of 5 times the square root of 3. There's no perfect square to pull out there, but look at what I can do here. I have down here 4 times the square root of 3. If I have the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, whatever that number is, this is going to become 1. right? Any non-zero number over itself is always 1. So square root of 3 over square root of 3, that's going to cancel and become 1. What I'm going to end up with here is the square root of 5 over the number 4. What about this one where we have the square root of 15 over 27? So I'm going to break this up into the square root of 15 over the square root of 27. So once again, the square root of 15, I can't really do anything with that right now because 15 is just 5 times 3. But I'll look to do something maybe later if I have to. So square root of 15 will stay as is up here. Square root of 27, I know that 27 is 9 times 3, and 9 is a perfect square. So I can write this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. So square root of 9 is 3, so I'm going to write this as the square root of 15 over 3, right? Square root of 9 is 3 times the square root of 3. So I'm done, right? No. So just as we saw in the last problem, I can further simplify. Square root of 15, again, can be written as square root of 5 times the square root of 3. If you'll notice in the denominator here, I have a square root of 3 as well. I have 3 times the square root of 3. So again, square root of 3 over square root of 3 is 1. And now I'm left with square root of 5 over 3. What if I had the square root of this 12 over 27? So again, very similar. I'm just going to break this up in the square root of 12 over the square root of 27. And in the numerator, now I can do something because 12 is 4 times 3. So I can write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And 4 is a perfect square, so obviously I can make that 2 times the square root of 3. We'll do that down here. 2 times square root of 3. And then here we have square root of 27. Square root of 27 I can write as what? Square root of 9 times the square root of 3. And basically the square root of 9 is 3. So this will be 3 times the square root of 3. 3 times the square root of 3. And as it happened in the last two problems, it happens again. I have square root of 3 over square root of 3, which is 1. Right? That's going to cancel out. So I'm going to end up with just 2 thirds here. Okay, for this next problem we have 6 times the square root of 30 over 25. So I'll take this 6, that's out in front, times 
square root of 30 over the square root of 25. Now we know what the square root of 25 is, that's 5. So let's write this as 6 times square root of 30 over 5. Is there anything that I can really do with the square root of 30? 30, if I break it down, would be what? 2 times 3, that's 6, then times 5. So no perfect squares in there. And nothing I can really cancel with what's in the denominator. A lot of you saw that 5 there, and you're thinking you can cancel. You can't. Because I can write this as 6 times square root of 2 times square root of 3 times square root of 5 over 5. There's nothing I can cancel. I can't cancel the square root of 5 with 5. That doesn't cancel out. If I had square root of 5 down here, yeah, I could cancel the numerator and denominator, but I don't have that. So basically, I have to just leave it like it is, and I'll just rewrite it as 6 times the square root of 30 over 5. Okay, here we have 4 thirds times the square root of 30 over 6. So I have 4 thirds times, I'm going to break this up into square root of 30 over square root of 6. So last time when I worked with square root of 30, I found that I couldn't do anything with it. But now I might be able to do some canceling though. I might be able to do some canceling. So let's write this as 4 times 30 is what? 2 times 3 times 5. So square root of 2 times square root of 3 times square root of 5. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. Then over, we have 3 times the square root of 6. So it's square root of 2 times square root of 3. So I can cancel the square root of 2 here with the square root of 2 here, the square root of 3 here with the square root of 3 here. Basically, I'm canceling the square root of 6 between the numerator and denominator. And what I'm going to be left with is a 4 times the square root of 5 over a 3. Okay, let's look at this one last problem. I think this is a very, very easy concept and doesn't require much practice. So we have 3 times the square root of 8 over the square root of 4. So what can we do here? Well, we'll have 3 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Right? 8 is 4 times 2. 4 is a perfect square. Then over the square root of 4, which we know is 2, but I'll just write square root of 4. Now, before I go through and make this a 2 here and this a 2 here, we know that the square root of 4 over the square root of 4 would cancel and become 1. I don't need to go through an extra step and write that as 6 times square root of 2 over 2 and then cancel that back and get 3 times the square root of 2. It would be senseless. So we cancel it right there and we're just left with what? 3 times the square root of 2. 